The Projectionist by Laura Fitzgerald Part 2 It wasn't always easy to get out to see him. I'd been selected to show some work at the gallery in town. I was quite nervous about it. I wanted to give it my best shot. I used to lose track of time when I drew. I think I only went to her house once. It was late, it was dark. I stood outside uh, watching her draw through the window. And when she saw me, she ran and snapped shut the blind. She was a bit off with me when she answered the door. Well, I suppose she was pretty private like that. She didn't come round much to ours either. I think there was something between her and Abby, but I've never been sure. She had this soft way and this dark hair and this sense that she knew who she was. She was his first proper girlfriend. When she came round, I just used to go to my room and play keyboard and connect it to my computer and use that to store and compose music. Only it didn't go very well. I loved music, found it frustrating, had all these ideas, but I couldn't express what I had in my head. All I knew was that when I did that, nothing else seemed to matter. It was my world, if you know what I mean. I said, Mark, she's feeling ignored. But he wouldn't listen. He'd change the subject or take a stupid picture of me with his phone. We used to take a lot of pictures like that. (laughs) (laughs) I like to take pictures of her when she wasn't looking, like um, her down on the pier with her hair blowing in the wind. I like to take photos of him from interesting angles, It was the second best thing to my art, like him skimming stones on the sea with his arm flicking back in an arc. Her looking out through the rain on the crowded top deck of a bus. Him playing pool in the back room of a pub. Her shopping. Him breaking wind. (laughs) Her sleeping. I took a lot of photos of her as she slept. And him swigging beer one night, that night, on the prom near the fair. We'd been going out, what, five weeks at that time? We were pretty mellow. He was wasted. When we went on the dodgems, she nearly threw up. We decided to go on the carousel to calm down. We went on this one horse together. He was fooling around. <laughs> no hands! Huh? Huh? You're far off! Huh? Hold on to me, please! Uh, oh my god. That better can. He had his arms round me and kissing the back of my neck and then he went quiet I knew what he wanted I thought this is it I was scared, excited I held the pole tight and leaned back and he kissed me again I suppose I just thought keep going and I held up my phone uh, took a picture of us and then perhaps it was looking up sharply or the thing is I got dizzy I I don't know what happened. There were mirrors in the ride, and just for a flash, I glimpsed my reflection, but I couldn't recognise who I was. I could see this guy staring back, who I knew was me, but I didn't know him as me. It was Mark, weird. What's up? I, uh... Mark? It's, uh... It's wrong. It isn't me in the mirror. Hey, of course it is. I can't see myself. Well, who do you think it is? Are you OK? It's all right. Um, it's all right, yeah. Your hands have gone cold. Only as soon as it came, the weirdness was gone. But the night was beautiful again, and the air was cool, and the light shone, and her hair smelled of sea, and her skin tasted of salt, and the ride was slowing, and it felt like this was our moment. So I took her hand, and we went down the prom to the beach. It was quiet. We were alone. All right? Yeah. (laughs) Are you sure about this? Hey, here, smile. Hey, that was bright, I can't see now. So, I'll lead you. Hmm. We walked a bit, went under the pier. Candy, can, come in. It smelt of seaweed and rust under there, but we didn't care. (laughs) We started off slowly. And then it was just clothes and arms and sand and the smell of him. He was taking pictures of me and I thought, let him, because I want him and he wants me and that's fine, because it's between us and us alone. I felt my way down and pulled at his zip. I felt bold and nervous and not me at all and he gave me a Johnny 
and I put it on him. Put my mouth on him. And then he takes a few photos of me. And that was okay. All I was thinking was, am I doing this right? Does he like this? How does it feel? Soft. Bam. And he's stiff. And I think, right. And he's click, click with his phone all the while. And later, he's pleasing me too. Full on. And I hold up my phone and take photos of him doing that. See, it was for us. It was part of that night, our special night. Just his and mine. When we woke up the next day, it was freezing. My top was like this and that. I had goosebumps. I felt ugly. When I sat up, I felt my period start. She looked sort of crumpled and lovely. I just wanted to hold her, take care of her. I'd never felt like that about anyone before. It was romantic. I needed a tampon. I held her gently. He squashed my boobs and pushed him away. I said, what's wrong? I needed paracetamol. I couldn't say why. She said she was hungry. I said, all right, well, let's walk up to the front. So we did. Only all the shops were still shut. So we found ourselves back at the fair. <laughs> it was locked. There was a big wire fence around it. What are you doing? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? How should I know? Come over with me. Get down. Are you crazy or what? Are you hungry or what? Mark, come back. So I was in the fair, wasn't I? And uh, once I was in, <laughs> I got distracted. Look, I was 18, I'd done my exams, I felt high as a kite because of candy. I just saw the dodgems, pushed one, jumped on, I couldn't resist. Huh? Can, can, what's this? What's this? <laughs> Come <Can't> Mark! <laughs> That's it, I thought, win her back, keep going. I mean, who doesn't take the odd risk when they're young? And after the dodgems, I span round the waltzers a bit. And then I saw the old Helter Skelter. <laughs> up here, Ken. Up here. Now watch this. I'm, I'm going to come down. Uh, I'm going to come down backwards. All right? All right? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what do you want then? Uh, stale chips or popcorn? Oh, just come back. But I wanted to please her, so I grabbed some sweets from a stool and chucked down some change. Only when I got back, she didn't seem very hungry. You know, after that night, it was fine. It was um, great for a while. It really was. But um, then she started to take longer and longer to return all my calls and texts. I would say it was a gradual thing. If it wasn't the morning after the peer thing or the sex itself or the photos... I felt right with him. I really did. It's just, we were so different. I was serious about becoming an artist. He was just a big kid. I couldn't see how it would work. It upset me. But I did my best to explain. I think she let him down gently. Only he wallowed in it. I tried to give him a hug, but he got all embarrassed, sort of pushed me away. I thought, OK, be patient, he'll get over her, things will soon be like before. And while I waited, well, I tried to compose music, but that went a bit haywire. So I just knocked up a few ringtones for phones and sold them on the web. Spread the message through Facebook, Bebo, MySpace, you know? If I couldn't get on with my music, I could at least bat around on the web. I thought, OK, Candy, I see, so you need some space, that's fine. I waited a week, nearly killed me. Then I texted her, saying, Candy, I miss you. Come round. Well, when the door went the next day. Breton, you up yet? Someone to see you? Of course I thought it was her. Candy? Whoa, boy, nice pants. Where is she? Oh, uh... Cand? Huh? See, it wasn't Candy, was it? Nah, it was two coppers looking at me wearing only my Bart Simpson undies. I, I didn't get it. They were saying something about a theft at the fair. What? Oh, mate, come off it. I only took a few sweets and I paid for them and all. 
they wanted me to go with them down to the station. No, you're joking, aren't you? Go catch a rapist, why don't you? Look, they took me in on suspicion of burglary. It turns out the same night I'd been mucking around at the fair, three grand had been nicked from its safe. Now, they traced me from the cameras, the CCTV. I mean, cameras, they've been around all our lives, haven't they? I'd forgotten about them, all right? So, it was question, statement, fingerprints, mugshot left, right, face on, flash, flash, flash. Then a copper came in with a cotton wool bud, said he wanted to swab my mouth, collect my DNA, and I was like, do we have to? And he said, what's the matter, you got something to hide? I said, of course not. Well, he goes, it's the law, open wide. And I thought, well, if it's the law, it must be in my best interests, right? Besides, what choice did I have? So I did as they said, and half an hour later, they told me to buzz off. I was released without a charge, and I couldn't wait to tell Candy. Like I say, thank God for CCTV. But Mark, isn't that how they got you? Yeah, but they released me because they traced the real crooks from the CCTV, see? But the cameras didn't stop them, did it? Well... I mean, they show CCTV footage on Crime Watch and you think, hello, why wasn't anyone watching at the time? No, like I said, Ken, it saved me. They could see I'd done nothing wrong. I mean, isn't that the whole thing about cameras and stuff? Don't they say if you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to fear? Besides, I was only in the fair because of you. You chose to climb in. Can't. didn't you get my text? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd like to see you. Mark. It's been a week, Candy. I, Mark, I said no. I mean, how much space do you need? M- Mark, I thought we agreed it was over. Well, aren't you glad that I've rung? No, yes. Listen to me. I'm glad you've rung because I've been thinking about those photos, Mark. You know, the ones we took on the beach. Mm, cool. Aren't they? I think we should delete them. Don't you like them anymore because they remind you of me? No, it's not that. It's just they're personal. They're between you and me and what's past should stay in the past, don't you think? I'll delete mine if you delete yours. Don't you trust me or something? Candy, the point is don't you trust me. We'll both delete them. Deal? All right. Right. Fine. Fine. That's settled then. So, where will you meet me? Mark, no. Oh, come on, Candy. We were good together. Don't tell me we weren't. I I can't believe you just want to throw it away. What what we could be, what what we are together. I I don't understand. We were, we we are hot. Why are you doing this to me? Can't you see that... Cand? Candy? Come on. When I rang off, I was trembling. Of course, I missed him, but I had to be strong for both our sakes. When he didn't call again, I was relieved. I thought I'd done the right thing. I felt for him, but it was driving me mad. Him shut in his room playing that song on and on. So I tried some psychological techniques to draw him out. You know, negotiation, hostage tactics, smoke and mirrors. Well... I took him up pot noodle and cake. Can I come in? Go away. Food. Eat it yourself. It's your favourite spicy chicken and Battenberg, Mark. You can have it if you just stop that. I thought, fine. He'll come around if I leave him alone. And later on, he put his head round my door. Asked me to help him with some internet stuff. He'd got these photos on his phone just landscapes, the sea, nothing much. He asked me to show him how to put them onto the web, so I loaded them onto some tourist site that he'd found. Oh, and he asked me to show him how to put the photos on the networking sites. I mean, we got friendly again. He even gave me a peck on the cheek, said, sorry for being a dork, and I said, it's all right, cretin, I know you can't help it. Uh, After that, he went to his room, all quiet. I slept pretty soundly that night. I was at a party. It was a week after Mark rang. It was a friend's birthday. Her family lived near the beach and I was messing about with some friends on the balcony. It was going dark 
and you could see the line of the ocean, very still, very bright in the distance. I was happy. You know, it was one of those moments when everything seems a possibility. My drawings had got some good reviews in the press. My art teacher had suggested that I apply to do art at St Martin's. So I was dancing and talking to my mates and that was taking my mind off Mark. A bit later I went down to the kitchen to look for some food. There were some girls from my class in the hall. One of them had her phone and they were looking at it in a huddle when they saw me. My stomach sort of went cold. They were trying to hide the phone from me and pass it round. What are you doing? What's going on? Give me that. Give it to me. Let, let me see. One of them tried to throw it to someone on my right and that's when I grabbed it. I saw it at once. On the phone was a photo. A photo of me under the pier, one Mark had taken. Full colour close-up, eyes shut, me doing that thing to him with my mouth. Oh my God. No. Where did you get this? Tell me where you got it. Please, tell me. They said they found it on the web, on our school site. Someone had found it in our art club page. They'd copied it from there and emailed it around on the internet and sent it to everyone's phones. And then all I knew was I, I was crying and running home and, and crying and thinking about my mum and dad and the shame of it. My cheeks, hot, legs, weak, and, and heart was, it was like a hammer. And when I got back, I logged on and, and tried to find that photo, retrieve it, delete it, whatever. That night, I managed to get hold of the guy who ran the school site, and, and he got it deleted from there. But by then, it was too late. I mean, the photo was out there. It was on the social networking sites, and literally all over. I delete it from one place, but find it again in another. I couldn't control it. I couldn't track it or trace it. I couldn't get it back. The first I knew of it, I was at home the next day, chilling out, watching TV. I had a new picture message. Its caption said, Candy sucks. When I saw the photo, oh no. I mean, I think I knew straight away. Mark was sprawled out on his bed reading Viz. Hey, thanks for knocking. Have you seen this? Mark, did you do this? Who knows? Mark, please, say this wasn't you. This wasn't you. That's not funny! Mark, you lied to me! You misled me. I showed you how to put photos on the web, but not ones like this. What about Candy? I thought you didn't like her. I don't like this. So it's just a joke. You complete pillow. That might get her attention. Can't you see what you've done? Oh, come on, Abby. This is the celebrity age. Everyone likes a bit of publicity, don't they? How could you do this? You... Animal. Oh, animal. I thought you said we all were. You, you said that we all are still animals, didn't you? I said technology makes necessary things easier. Mark, this is sodding unnecessary. It's cruel. Well, she dumped me. I've got her back. So what? We all use each other. You said that life was all about getting ahead. So I'm getting ahead. And I've had a little help from technology. So what? So what? 